watch there, son. How you feel? Pretty good. Good. Just talk to me. All right. <laughs> How would I bust your Franklin off? Hey, what's up, jackass? What's up, Toth? How you doing? Well, Toth, did you ever just ponder your own existence? Nope. One time I pounded on. Yes, go on. No, it's dirty. That's why I want you to go on. Spice this <laughs> show up. This place is a dump. Sure is. Take a look at my castle falling apart, my friend. I know. Your castle's falling apart. Wardrobe has fitted me with a tight shirt. <laughs> it's dilapidated. Yeah. I like that word, Toth. Dilapidated. They fit me last year, though, and that's the odd thing. That's a real oddball thing about my clothes. You know what I'm saying? It's oddball. You got oddballs, Rudy? <laughs> Woo! So, uh, you know who we got tonight, huh? I don't have the slightest clue, nor do I care, my friend. Doug I'm Hen drinking. Doug Henning? Doug Henning. Right. I. Uh, Greg Hubbard. Is that Greg right? Hubbard? Greg Hubbard? Yeah. Yeah. He's a magician. Oh. He's going to make you disappear. Mm. He's going to make you disappear. He's going to make my little twinkie <laughs> Did you ever disappear, hear that with huh? It? Yeah. This tie keeps going. This tie is too short. I need war. I'm going to take all my clothes off. Here. Shut up. Duty show. Right. So when we come back, we're going to meet him. He's going to do a couple tricks for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. And uh, Rudy. Mm -hmm. Then we got a special guest. I don't know who it is, though. That, that's pretty special. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse, I got gas all over the place. You know what I mean? I can smell it. Yeah, it's coming out the front and back door. All right. We're coming right back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> There was a time when people helped their neighbors, and together they built a stronger community. This spirit lives on today in NeighborWorks, a unique partnership of local residents, business, and government leaders. NeighborWorks volunteers have rebuilt over 100,000 homes, restoring pride to millions of neighbors. So help a neighbor and a nation join NeighborWorks, reversing decline, rebuilding pride. Children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. Excuse me, do you wear your safety belt? Why, no, I don't wear my safety belt. Thank you. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Watching for a couple weeks in a row, we've aired the same commercials for you because we know you're goofy on the fuzz and you're watching kids go off the wall. How you doing tonight? Doing great. How you doing? Good. Mr. Good. You remind me of my dentist. Well, thanks very much. Sure. Open, <laughs> open wide. Yeah. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> He's getting right into it here. All gay all the time. I mean, happy. You know, happy. So, like, do you always wear a tuxedo, or is that just something? Well, I thought I had a dress for the occasion. You do. Right. You look good. Thank you. You look. Is that your own tux or do you rent it? My tux. Is it? Yep. Good. <laughs> you get those little. I saw those little yeah, card fan. From my. You uh, won't be able to see it. The cameramen are all armless. <laughs> they only have one shot and they just move it with their nose. What? Now, now, you, do you get those at like a magic store? I got these for a Christmas gift. You did? Yes, I did, sir. All right. <laughs> Can you make my wife disappear? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I'm from Chicago. Be careful when you ask that. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. You don't get it? I didn't think so, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, geez, look at the time. All right, so come on. Hey, do you think magicians get a bad rap? Yeah. How come? Because a lot of magicians are not good magicians. 
That's why. Well, I mean, like, people, you say you're a magician, and people are like, oh, well. Uh, I don't think people like to be uh, fooled. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, a lot of people get upset. Well, I'm a real jackass. Hostile. Hey, yeah. can you hang from the chandelier and throw fucking fire bombs up in the air? Sure. Did you ever hear that before? That's pretty funny stuff. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> Every day. Okay. Uh, do people, like, call you all the time and say, come over and, you know, uh, people do call the me. thing? Yeah. Make it disappear, you know? All the time. Okay. Make it disappear. Right. And I, I make right. it disappear, I too. Did. All right. Yep. Well, show me some of your stuff there, oh, like, jerky. Uh, Mr. <laughs> jerky, to you, sir. A trick here? Right. I brought one with? Hey, I, I've done that trick before. Uh, you've done rope tricks before? Yeah, come on. I'm talking about magic tricks, all right? Oh, hey. Uh, was <laughs> trick with three pieces of rope here. All right. Here's a long piece of rope. Please, sir, examine that for me. Here's a medium-sized piece of rope. Take a look at that, please. And for you, sir, nothing personal. Just well, a piece of rope, okay? All the, I always get this treatment. Yeah, all right. Is it normal? Sh short dick yeah. man. Yeah, it's that's normal. what they said about me. Look what I'm doing tonight. How do I know those guys aren't with your uh, entourage? Because they're your entourage. <laughs> right. All right, anyway, I take these three pieces of rope right. to my math teacher back in high school. Right. I'd say to him, teacher, look, I have three pieces of rope, and they're all exactly I'd the same length. I'd strangle them because I got an F. That's right. An F. I hated mine. And he said, Greg, oh, where was it now? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right. Anyway, I take this to my teacher back in high school. I right. say to him, these are all exactly the same length. Right. And he'd say, this is exactly why you're flunking my class. I hated this guy. So I set out to prove him wrong. I took the ends. Right. I lined up all six ends right next to each other like this. Right. Then I said to him, look, now because the ends all line up, now all three pieces of rope are the same length. Right. He said, from the thumb up, you're right. From the thumb down, you're still flunking my class. So I grabbed the ends like this, and I pulled, tugged, right. and stretched. And I made all three pieces of rope the same length. You can close your mouth now. You're going to catch flies. I made this piece of rope right here. Right. I didn't say you could touch that yet. The same length as this piece of rope right here, which was also the same length as that piece of rope. He said, Greg, that's amazing. How do you do it? I said, it's simple. I start with a small piece of rope, a medium-sized piece of rope, and I finish with a long piece of rope. You know, I'd like to put that picture of your face in my next brochure, OK? <laughs> all right, everybody. <laughs> Here, here, take the rope. Would you please? No, forget it. I'm not giving this to you. No, now tell me how much I could get that trick for. Four ninety five, any magic shop, yes, sir. What the hell are you doing, huh? You got crazy rope. <laughs> I know that trick. Crazy rope. <laughs> Silly rope. Yes, sir. Well, the guy, what can I tell you? Well, what makes you think of Oh wait, hold on. Can you make it this again? He's rude. Hey, Mr. Twinkie! What's up, Toast? How you doing? I'm a little drunk. Really? Because I got a new job, Toast. <laughs> what, in the village people with that leather police hat on? No, I work on the show Cops. <laughs> <laughs> I hold the microphone. Oh, really? Yeah, I go in there, we bust into people's houses, they're smoking crack, and I steal it. <laughs> I hide it inside my microphone box. <laughs> you know, for evidence's purposes. Right. And all that. I'm Sergeant Major Twinkie. Do you get to speed around in that, like those cars that smash into light poles and stuff? Oh, you know what? There's a lot of stories I could go into. But, um, you know, I don't have the time, and I don't want to steal any of the stories, you know? Right. Because they're so good. But one time, <laughs> one time, we, we weaseled our way into these people's house. We broke the door down <laughs> and said, let us see where's the hashish, mamas. <laughs> and we kicked some ass. Right on. And then we turned the cameras on, and they were, you know, we said that they were just injured to begin with. Right. So you kick, you kick some ass off camera? Hey, you know what? In L.A., it's okay. Why not here, my friend? You know, they should ba bash the door down with you. Like, hold you like a battering ram. Hey, shush, 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 shush. <laughs> so when did you get that? What is wrong with these clothes? My clothes don't fit. I don't know. Yeah, shut the... I got that gig about three weeks ago. Good for you. Because I know the guy who owns the show, the guy who does that Models, Inc. show, Aaron Spelling. He's a good friend of mine, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you know, we got our own, uh, like, great guy here. Mm -hmm. It's Greg Hubbard. 
Greg, how the hell are you? <laughs> hey, Twinkie, what's happening? Not too much. Hey, you heard the lowdown, my friend. I'm in the police now. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when Twinkie kicks your ass? Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you break the law, you pay, okay? Yep. Don't do the time if you can't pay the crime. Don't do it. <laughs> Hey, have you ever met McGruff? No, he's fictional. Oh, <laughs> like, what are you? I'm the real McCoy. <laughs> so, uh... Greg Hubbard, how you doing? Where you been? Who are you? Hey, I'm... <laughs> Where's the wedding? <laughs> Where's the wedding? <laughs> Actually, I'm your waiter tonight. Hey, excellent. I'll have a double B&B &B straight up, my friend. <laughs> you got it. What, what kind of what kind of people call you up and say magic me man? Uh, sometimes a lot of corporations, uh, kids parties, people want to have a good parties. time. Yeah, those are fun. Want to see this disappear? <laughs> open, your, open your pocket. No, not this. Yeah, magician. right. Sure, you're a sicko. Thank you very much. Sir. Sure. I tried to hide it, but I guess you can see through me. Can't, not, I mean, is this a full time thing for you? Yeah, or? it is. That's I work like about maybe five six shows a week. That keeps good. me busy. My older brother does this and. Uh, I saw his lifestyle. He doesn't work very much. He gets paid a lot, and I said, "That's what I want to do." Yeah. It was either that or become a cable TV show host. So, <laughs> here I am. Yeah. There's only so much <laughs> room. There are some lifestyles that I want to get accustomed to. Actually, we have to take a break. We're gonna come back with our, uh, I don't know, something. Who <laughs> knew? Jeffrey, hitting is wrong. You're bigger, you're stronger, and you cool off and you don't hit. Period. Is that understood? Is it? Well, is it? Take time out. Don't take it out on your child. A public service message from the National Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse. Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Franzone. I remember Mr. Franzone quite well. A strange individual, really. I remember one morning I was downstairs, and I heard a doorbell. And I walked up the stairs, walk, 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 walk. I finally got up the stairs, and I opened the door, and there was Mr. Franzone. He was trying to sell pounds of bologna from door to door in the neighborhood. I could not believe it. I said, get away from me, Mr. Franzone. I don't want to buy any bologna. He looked at me and he said, you don't want to buy any bologna. Okay. Well, I'll just leave peacefully. And he left. And he came back the next day and he tried to sell me ham. And I said, when I said I don't want to buy any bologna, I meant I don't want to buy any meat products from you, you dirty little rat. Stay off of my property. And he looked at me straight in the eyes and he said, you know what? You don't have old Dick Nixon to kick around no more. I remember admiring him after that. Very bold individual. What about happened, Mr. Franzo? When Raymond was six, I was afraid to take him to the playground because they were doing drugs. When he was 10, I couldn't let him play ball in the schoolyard because of the gangs. When he was 15, I wouldn't let him go to any dances because there could be a fight or a shooting. Now he's a man, and I realize he's never been a kid. Give your children back their childhood. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Here's one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is.
here's the other. Life's too short. Stop the hate. Tonight, sir. Pretty good, Jim Tell. Nice, nice to meet you, my friend. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. I met you once before. I you came did. on the show. You were, you were on. That's right. Uh, when we were in the midst of uh, Zonka TV, but that really didn't go too far. Maybe no one knows what you're talking about. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we uh, tried to start a. My name's Greg Shuttlecock. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and we uh, had a sports program. Um, that we still do do. It's called uh, Raleigh TV. All Raleigh Fingers action all the time. And, uh, but we tried a Zonka TV. Uh, Larry Zonka, football great, out of Miami, played with the uh, New York Giants a bit. Uh, back to Miami after the Giants. Um, it didn't really go that far, though, Jim. I know. No, so that's why air, I'm back. We, we air your installment here, and actually, it's like. A nationally syndicated piece, isn't it? Well, Raleigh TV, you know, since the first time that uh, was aired here, is now skyrocketed into uh, just something that's unbelievable. And I, you know, What's to tell you the truth, I got a nice car and a beautiful apartment out of it all. <laughs> Still looking for a girlfriend, though. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a Raleigh loving babe out there for me somewhere. Probably. Probably. Do you have trouble seeing it all? I mean,. Well, you know, I'll tell you, when I was younger, I had astigmatism. <laughs> uh, that's, well, it progressed for about four <laughs> or five years. My parents never really did anything about it. They were, they were uh, younger when they had me, and uh, they were farm people. Right. <laughs> I grew up on a farm. They were simple people, my parents. God love them. But they didn't really know much about eyes and uh, nose and throat. Eventually went to a doctor, and this is what, you know, my glasses are especially made for me. And, you know, I mean, they'll go through hell for you, Jim. <laughs> but that's what you like. July? July. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us more about Raleigh TV? Because maybe people don't understand. And you're also doing something. You were about to talk about what you got an apartment in a car, the whole deal, you've taken a special turn with the whole thing. Where, where's that going? Well, well, first of all, let me tell you, Raleigh TV is uh, airing currently here on your show, thankfully. And, uh, well, that's one of the many TV outlets. But I understand that it's also airing on the radio. Really? Yes, it's airing, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm one who will plug the hell out of something. Because <laughs> I want to keep that nice car and uh, nice apartment. It's a pet house apartment. Uh, it's right out AM 1000. Steve Dahl, uh, Bruce Wolf show. Turn it on because, uh, like I said, those payments are pretty high for those Mercedes. When, yeah. when, when, is that, when does that air? Uh, it's 8 o'clock or so every Wednesday morning. Okay. Raleigh TV. I'm Greg Shuttlecock. How are you? Now... On the, do you have? Did you bring anything with you to show? I brought a clip along with, uh, okay. just so you might get an idea of, of what you're in for when you turn it on the radio dial, which is something you know, Jim. So one thing that they have on us, the visual media, right, is that you can listen to them while you're in your car, Jim. Right. And uh, that's something you know. In the morning, you're on your way to work. Blah blah blah. <laughs> you want to hear a little Raleigh TV? You know, this is what you would see in your mind's eye. So if we could run the clip, uh, it's can we just run a it, place? little snippet of Raleigh TV. Holy. Manager Alvin Dark wastes no time going to his relief ace, Raleigh Fingers. National League most valuable player, Steve Garvey's at the plate, giving the largest crowd in Dodger Stadium history pause for optimistic thoughts. But Fingers pitches the A's out of danger as the A's rush Raleigh Fingers into action. We're looking for the big ball. We're looking for the home run here. Oh, the shot! Red and green! Fingers faces Bill Russell now with one out and the potential tire. There you go. Good stuff. 
Good stuff. I love Raleigh figures. Now, is, now, he has one of those crazy handlebar mustaches. Is that something that's prompted you to, to love him? I think that that's a style of, by, of a bygone era, Jim. You know, when baseball players and sports players had a little style, a little panache, a little class, a little wily tenacity, if you will. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think that that's just something that's gone, that's missing. Uh, in today's players, it's all money, money, money. Hey, take a look. You know, do some grooming upon yourself first <laughs> before you hit the, uh, you know, not cutting out the name of the Padres in your hair. How about? Oh, yeah. Got me a little hot and bothered there. Right. <laughs> so, right. Stop the hate. You know what I'm saying? Stop the hate. Love the Raleigh is what I right. say. <laughs> So how, how much, where, where do you see this going? Where do you see this taken? Uh, I see big things for Raleigh TV. I don't know if anyone else does, but I do. Uh, eventually, well, we're working on a Raleigh movie. Okay. It's called In Search of Raleigh. <laughs> because I think there's a little Raleigh in all of us. <laughs> you were, excuse me, sorry, a little flat. You were actually uh, trying to come up also, I, I heard you talking about with a, uh, it's on the back sheet, it's blue paper. Uh, Raleigh Society. Well, you know, isn't that a little bit far out there? I really don't think anything is, Jim. Uh, I, I will probably be, um, just to start everything out, the first candidate for president under the Raleigh Party. Okay. Which uh, I want to eventually <laughs> establish some sort of party, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, basically a society. Have uh, places of worship where you could go um, pray to the mustached god and uh, you know love Raleigh in a lot of ways right so um, this this so your Aaron your Raleigh TV segments here on the cable access channel all over the country on every cable access channel exact well yeah well now we're syndicate okay and uh, I was just coming through town thought I'd stop by I know that you're one of our affiliates and uh, the radio things happen on Wednesdays? Uh, every Wednesday morning. You're okay. going to have to listen for it. AM 1000. Steve Daw, Bruce Will. <laughs> you must, the morning team. You must be getting a ton of change to be keeping dropping the names like that. Well, you know, Jim, uh, it's called I Wash Your Back, You Wash My Back. <laughs> In the business. You kids all know that. It's more like I shave your back, you shave mine. I shave your palm, you shave my palm. <laughs> Well, we're out of time for you too, jackass. <laughs> Just kidding, Mr. Shulka. Thank you very much. Thank you for stopping out. Thank you. We'll be back in a little bit uh, to wrap this uh, ship up. Your first time as a Junior Achievement Elementary School volunteer can be a little scary. Can you get kids that young to think about their futures? Call us about volunteering and you'll see. We'll supply you with training for this new program and the kids will supply plenty of motivation. back like that. Wow! No warning. Uh, oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I gotta do something. How you doing there, Mr. Twinkie? What's up, Tar? <laughs> How are ya? I'm uh, not feeling well. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, yeah? I'm sailing, sailing, <laughs> takes me away Thank from you. all my problems. You know, uh, I think that uh, we, we have, this is the end. Not of our lives or the world, but just of this show. Oh, damn it. 
Well, I look forward to seeing your work on Cops. I'll be on Cops, everybody. Just make sure you watch. I'm the guy with the microphone. You know what you would be good at? Huh? If they could stick the microphone in you like a big windscreen. <laughs> you know, like you see idea. those fuzzy things in the... You know? I'm thinking they should use me as some sort of device to, <laughs> look, to watch people. You know what I mean? <laughs> they should use you as a device to penetrate... Like if someone's hiding drugs, drugs and money in strange places on their body. I could be a probe. Right, an <laughs> FBI probe. A spongy cream-filled probe. Well, I'd also like to give a big round of applause and a thank you to our friend Doug Hubbard. Woo! Oh, great. I said, Doug, I knew I was going to do it. Greg lives out in Palatine, and they had all that trouble with that Brown's chicken, and I'm wondering if I'm putting two and two together and coming up with the right thing, but maybe not. He's out in Palatine if you need to get a hold of him to make your business associates disappear. He's like a, a magic man. <laughs> Whoa. He is that. He is that. And uh, I'd like to thank Greg Shuttlecott. Huh? Yeah? Right. <laughs> Where, you got anything to say, son? Before we go? All right. Fine. Keep smoking the pot. Okay. We'll see you uh, next week, I think. <laughs>